Hello, my name is Ian Dean. Uh, in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how to combine a group of mesh renderer objects into a skinned mesh renderer object. So I've got this little pyramid of cubes, and I want to combine that into uh, a single object to reduce the draw calls. So currently, each cube has its own draw call. If I throw this ball at it, you can see they're all separate objects, and they have to be that in order for the physics to work. So one solution for this is to combine these into a mesh renderer. So let me show you how to do that. Create other, I create my mesh baker object. Um, I add these objects to that mesh baker object. The easiest way to do that is op oops. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to open this, select the objects in the hierarchy. Click Add Selected Meshes. So now my Mesh Baker has those selected. Create Empty Assets. Uh, I call this Blocks. So this is very much like using Mesh Baker in any other project. And then I bake those together into an atlas. And now comes a critical difference. Instead of bake into Mesh Renderer, which would all the blocks would be fused together in a single mesh. I'm going to bake these into a skinned mesh renderer. And then I'm going to click bake. And I'm going to click disable renderers on source objects. So what's happened here? The it look the scene looks exactly the same except if I look at the draw calls uh, our draw calls are three, one for the plane, one for this pyramid, and one for this mesh. And if I select this object, it's easier to see if I go to wireframe, notice that uh, all these blocks are now one object. When I select it, they all go blue at the same time. Um, so does it still work the way it did before if I hit it with the ball? So watch what happens. The ball comes flying in, and they all go and get knocked over. So how did that work? Well, what happened is each of these cubes became a bone in the skinned mesh renderer. So bones are just transforms. So the transforms, which is just this information for each cube, is being used as a bone to animate the vertices in the skin mesh. So this is kind of a neat technique. Um, it's similar to dynamic batching, um, but you can combine a whole bunch of objects into a single one to reduce your draw calls. But do keep in mind that this now requires skinning, which it didn't before. So uh, you have to balance the, the uh, performance hit of the skinning versus the performance gain of saving draw calls. Now there are a couple of issues that you have to keep in mind with the skin meshes. Uh, the main one being this white box. That white box is the render bounds of the, um, the skinned mesh. So if I select this skin mesh and see there's this bounds field. And notice that that bounds field does not update as these blocks animate. So the blocks get moved around. They um, fall and they can fall outside that box. Now what Unity uses that box for is um, if the view frustrum uh, does not include that, or if this box is not inside the view frustrum, then these objects will vanish from the scene. Um, so I could try to do that if I let's, uh, reorient my camera, reset position try to illustrate this for you. Oops, reset rotation is what I wanted. On the camera, we're at isometric, which is good. So where, where's my, select my skin mesh. Okay, let's rotate the camera so it's like about that. So notice in the game view, these blocks are currently visible and right about here, you might see them suddenly vanish. Where's the, uh, 
oh, um, I've had this selected. So where's my skin mesh? Make it zero, 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 and go back to my camera. Sorry, this is taking a while. Oh, my main camera's underneath. That's not what I want. Okay, try again. So to watch what happens, if I move the camera forward, there. See how the, the block here just suddenly vanishes? And that's because uh, the camera frustrum is now outside of the view bounds. Now if I extend the view bounds, oh, that's a, this is a bug in Unity that at runtime it doesn't notice changes unless you um, click update when off screen there and then it works again. So after you, if you click that update one off screen, then it accepts these new render bounds. It's, it's sort of a weird, silly bug in Unity. Um, okay, so that's what the render bounds does. So, you, so you're, you're, if you don't keep that updated, your objects will vanish. So one way to keep it updated is, or one solution for this is you could send that render bounds fairly big and, um, oops and then rely on the fact that the blocks are mostly going to stay inside it. However, if your blocks could travel a really long distance, that may not be good enough. So there are some scripts included with Mesh Baker that will keep these updated. So this one, I just have to add it. And oops, let me select the object so you can see that white box. Now watch what happens to the white. Oops, why is it not? Ah, okay. Sorry, this script, I picked the one that needs, you need to give it some game objects. So I'm not going to add all these, I'll just drag four in. So I have to drag the objects that are in the thing. This one uses the bounds on these objects to build a render bounds. So notice that now that white box changes size. The other one is a little faster and easier to use, but not quite as accurate. So remove that component, um, but has a very similar effect. Come on there. So the render bounds, um, it updates the bounds too. Uh, there is a performance hit with using these scripts. So you may want to have the script execute every third frame or so. Uh, you also might want to you write your own script for doing this. Um, one important detail is if you do there is that bug I mentioned where you have to check that update off screen and if you're writing your script after setting the bounds you have to turn that on and then off and then the bounds will take if you don't do that um, unity ignores the new value of the bounds that you put in okay so that is an example of how to use skin meshes um, or uh, how to combine a bunch of regular mesh render objects into a skin mesh.